Uh, now we're going to get down to where we're having fun. We're going to talk about how to do it to grow gardens and to have fun. And that's what it's all about. This is how we used to roll. This is an old horse-drawn roller. We put a hitch on it, pull it with a 10-horse or 15-horse John Deere tractor. This is May the 5th or 3rd. You can see it must have been cold. I still got a coat on. There is a tomato, you know, with a, with a cage. The first year we did it, we put black uh, soaker hoses in. Never turned them on, so we don't use black soaker hoses anymore. You know, 20 pounds more tomatoes per plant versus black plastic. Versus black plastic. Is that a transplant? That is a transplant. Yes, it is. How we do it? We take a little spade, wiggle the soil open, stick it down in there, put the rye back, put a cage over it. Goodbye, you're done. No more black, black end rot because the soil don't splash up on the tomatoes. You know. They great for weed suppression. There they are. There they are. Stakes may not work. You may have to use cages to make them do that well. But just look at the armor. That's what I wanted to show you. There's armor. No weed pressure. You know. Everybody likes to talk about their new inventions. This is my precision pumpkin planter. This costs lots of money. This is like Ray's planter other than it didn't come with a seat and an air conditioner. This has got a seat and an air conditioner on it. But what we did, we took an old corn planter unit on that drive wheel right there, there's a red mark. We put a seat on there because it's just hard to keep walking behind this thing so you can ride. Put a funnel up through there, there's, a, there's the opening disc and here's the fluted colder. And the bucket there's got fertilizer in it and that five gallon bucket does seven and a half acres. You know. So he puts two seeds and a quarter fistful of fertilizer down every time he sees that red mark. And that's a hundred year old sod. Never had a crop in it for 100 years. That's an old pasture that he just no-tilled into it. The reason we got that, that belongs to the Ohio Wool Growers Association. The taxes were $13,000 on that seven acres because it was commercial. They says, if you can get us to agriculture use, we'll rent it to you. I saved him $8,530 every year and I pay no rent. Neat thing about this is, guys, these are pumpkins, no herbicides other than the burn down to take out the, the fall grasses from that pasture. No fungicide treatments. A quarter fistful of fertilizer every plant or a five gallon bucket full. And that white pumpkin right there is $37 and this is 17. <laughs> you know. Anyhow, this is our no-till potatoes. And what we'll do out here, we should do it this afternoon. Everybody should have had two potatoes to take with them to the field because we're going to roll the cover crop and we put, two, put a row of tomato potatoes down, right on the cover crop, take an old rotten round bale of hay, roll it out on top of there, and there they come. Look how dark green those potatoes are. No-till taters. There, this is uh, Durr, George Durr. He's right on Route 77, just after you cross into Ohio. 750 acres of pumpkins. Four years ago, he called me and he says, we, you put pumpkins on rye. Tell me about that. We went down to see him. We sold him a 15-foot crop roller. Going to plant 90 pounds of rye per acre on 400 acres. This is the results he had. He has 36 workers, Mexican workers. Was down there that summer to see these, and the Mexican worker come over and he says, Mr. Brandt, I want to thank you so much. He says, we normally had to walk those fields, hoe out the weeds, put drip line down, hook up a drip line, go out and check a drip line because a deer would walk on it and cut it, fix it. He says we didn't have to hoe that field one time. Yeah. You know, not one time. So from now on, they're all pumpkins with rye. Uh, this, is our, this is our mini planter, and I don't know whether this may not be the one, but it has a Don crop roller on the front of it that will roll the residue. Uh, they sent me this as a demo, so there's only three units that's got a roller and one unit's got a fluted colder. So we're comparing to see if the fluted colder one about emergence. That's what we're doing here. So you've got a picture of that one, right? Yeah. Okay, well, here, you go. Here, you go. here we go. This little bit of green you see here, this was thrown out there March the 1st with a broadcast seeder 
Uh, I'm going to call it four sweepings from our seed sales business. We didn't think it'd grow. Uh, it finally warmed up and it started growing. So, but here you can see the roller working. It has a, uh, a uh, scraper in that will clean the tr track to put the corn in. No fluted colder. See that, Marshall? That ro roller? Those are 1200 bucks a piece for each one of those, aren't they? Yes. We saw one in Ohio. We just didn't get to see it work. Yeah, look at that. So in other words, you can roll it and plant all in one activity. Now, how do you get that planter to work? That planter is a 1962 planter. And Dave, we, like if you find one that you have to do a little refurbishing, how much would something like a planter like that cost? We give, uh, we give $3,000 for that four row planter, you know, and didn't have, and just had to put some oil on the chains to make it work. But what I want to show you is if we can get to. Because a lot of farmers don't want those small planters, right? It's right. Like, and right. you can find these sometimes you can find in a garage. Them. If you'll see those little them. boxes in the back there, stop it right there, Jay. Those are insecticide boxes. Guys didn't like white planters because it, didn't, it wouldn't penetrate. Why wouldn't they penetrate? They didn't have enough weight. They didn't have any spring pressure. So guess what? When David had one, those boxes right there, you got the seed box, first box, second box, insect box. That insect box holds 200 pounds of sand. Huh. Yeah. Ah. So that weight transferred to the seed opener, the seed is always at the right depth no matter how hard and dry the soil gets. And guys can't figure out how to make that planter work, and I just love it, you know. <laughs> and you don't tell them. I don't yeah. tell them. <laughs> you know, we have the ability to put liquid fertilizer on if we need it, but I just want to show you there's options out here, you know, to do lots of things. So you can put your compost tea in there, and you right. can put your fish oil, compost tea extract, perfect. And this is just, you know, cover crops can reduce erosion, provides nutrients, and save you money. And my cover crops, I like to think about is my woodlot. My cover crop represents my woodlot because we have different size trees in our cover crop. We got the big oak trees, we got the, we got the little bitty dogwood trees, we got, some, we got some pine trees just because of the species that are for covers. And I think that's the next we're gonna talk about is how to select a cover and I think Ray and I Jay All three of us are going to jump in and we're going to design your mix, Marshall, for that field, a summer mix. So we'll all walk through it so you can start. We're going to teach you how some of the principles we want you to start so we can design a mix, okay? And then we're going to go out in the field.